Hi everyone, it is me, your Ukrainian teacher Ola here. It's been a while since the last time that I uh, said those words to you, since we saw each other. Uh, for some reasons, I am doing not really well um, with managing my presence uh, on social media. I hope that in the nearest future I can fix that and I sincerely apologize for not uh, responding to your videos and your comments to not responding to all of them but I'm reading them and one of the most from what you uh, have written me from what I understood from your feedback uh, one of the most requested video was um, Ukrainian cases practice you seemed to really enjoy the previous ones that I made so let's go ahead and practice uh, some Ukrainian cases. What are we going to do in this video? Just a quick reminder. So you see a sentence uh, with some words in brackets. Uh, your assignment, your task is to open the brackets and put the word in the bracket. Um, in the brackets, it could either be a noun, a pronoun, or a combination of a noun with an adjective or a pronoun you will see and put them into a correct case so that the sentence makes sense i'm giving you a moment to do that you can pause the video or take as much time as you need and then i will um, tell you the correct answer this time i decided however to make it a bit more complicated um, a bit more difficult and i did not write the um, prepositions so you might go and try and figure them by yourselves and if not you will see the correct answer and we will talk about that. So the first sentence is Vin приїхав робота машина. So apparently what I'm trying to say is that he has arrived or he has uh, driven a car to work. So he has arrived to work by car. Okay. Vin приїхав робота машина. And you see the, uh, there is a space before the word robota. There should be a preposition. I'm giving you some time before giving the correct answer. So the preposition is na, okay, to go to work. In Ukrainian, we use the preposition na, which means on. So we say on work, to go on work. Uh, so... Um, the correct answer is Vin приїхав на роботу машиною. Okay? Vin means he and that's our subject, right? Somebody somebody who performs the action. He has come to work. He has come where? On what? On work. And by means of what? by means of car by car uh, and that takes orudny um, vidminok or instrumental case vin priyikhav na robotu mashinoyu okay and that's what we are going to do uh, in this video if you find this assignment interesting then keep watching and let us practice some ukrainian cases because i know i know that figuring them out is not very easy and the more you practice the better you get. And the next sentence is Yoho Diti Yizdyat Shkola Avtobus. What I'm trying to say here is that his children go to school by bus. Okay? When we want to say to school, however, we don't use the same uh, preposition that we used for robota, for work. We use a different one. Do you know the preposition? Do you not know the preposition? It's do. Do. Okay. So the correct answer is Yoho diti yizdyat do shkoli avtobusom. Okay. Yoho diti obviously is the um, subject of a sentence. That's why it's nazivny vidminok or nominative case. You always, oh, when we have a subject, we have nominative case, right? That's one of the main functions of nominative case to, to be the subject of a sentence, right? 
Їздять where? До школи, to school, and the preposition do uh, in, ter um, in terms of uh, directions, right? Uh, requires uh, genitive case. Родовий відмінок до чого? До школи. And then again, by the means of what? By what? By, uh, by, ba by bus, uh, автобусом, орудний відмінок. Next. Вона зустріла він. And here uh, I kept the prepositions, but I decided to take three different ones. Uh, Біля супермаркет. So she met him uh, near the supermarket. Вона зустріла він в супермаркет. So she met him in the supermarket. І вона зустріла він перед супермаркет. So in front of, okay? And three of those prepositions will require three different cases. And we shall check now if you manage to give me correct answers. And the correct answers are Вона зустріла його біля супермаркету. Again, so вона here is nominative case because she is the subject, she is the one who performs the action. Зустріла кого? Його, him, accusative case, direct object, uh, di yeah, yeah, right, direct object. And then Біля супермаркету, near the supermarket. Preposition біля means at or near and requires um, uh, родовий відмінок, uh, genitive case. Вона зустріла його в супермаркеті, in the supermarket. Preposition в in this case requires locative case. Місцевий відмінок, because the question is where, not to where, right? We are dealing with a place, not with a direction. So here we have місцевий відмінок, locative. And before or in front of the supermarket, перед супермаркетом, we will have орудний відмінок or um, instrumental case. Moving on to the next one. Oh, here I have a bit of a trickier sentence. Um, він зустрів вони Норвегія, so he met them in Norway, one sentence, and the other sentence, pay attention to the verb, it's not зустрів, but зустрівся, and ся means the, the verb is a reflexive verb. Вони, uh, apparently with a preposition, um, Сполучене королівство. Okay, so він зустрів вони, um, preposition, Норвегія. He met them in Norway. And він зустрівся вони, сполучене королівство. Hmm, take a moment. Write down your answer. Are you ready? Він зустрів їх у Норвегії. Again, він, obviously nominative, because uh, subject, зустрів їх, um, зустрів кого, зустрів їх, so вони becomes їх, знахідний, uh, traditionally direct object. But where, у, our missing preposition, Норвегії, okay? У Норвегії, Місцевий відмінок у кому, у чому, на кому, на чому. When we are talking about the place, we are using місцевий відмінок. But in the next one, uh, we see that uh, before вони, we have a preposition. We have a reflexive verb plus preposition, and only them comes вони. Hm. Він зустрівся з, the missing preposition, ними. У Сполученому Королівстві. Again, він is clear. Зустрівся з ким? With whom? З ними. With the preposition з, which stands for with. We are using орудний відмінок, instrumental case. Where? У Сполученому Королівстві. Obviously, uh, місцевий відмінок, locative case. What is the difference, though? 
Він зустрів їх у Норвегії. Has a meaning of he met them in Norway. Could be the first time they saw each other. Okay, but that doesn't have to be. But when we use the preposition, uh, but when we use the reflexive verb зустрівся, you must use the preposition з. Okay, met up with whom, okay? So he met them, but зустрів їх, but met up with whom, зустрівся з ними, okay? And here we have орудний відмінок. That's the difference. Next one. Hmm. So the date and the month. Uh, листопад. Світлана виповниця. 20 роки. So in November, Svetlana turns 20 uh, years old. And another one, 20 листопада, Ігор виповниться 43 роки. And uh, take your time to write down the answer. So on the 20th of November, Ігор turns uh, 43 years old and the answers uh -huh. so to say in november we use a uh, mystery vidminok when we want to say in some months so in november u listopadi in april u kvitni in january um u sichni etc etc okay and we use preposition u or v and mystery vidminok svetlani vyplnitsya 20 rokiv Okay, so the verb vyplnitsya requires that the indirect object Svetlana comes in the da dative case. Okay, vyplnitsya komu Svetlani dative case, but vyplnitsya scho dvadsat chogo rokiv rodovy vidminok. Okay. So when we have 20, 30, 40, 50, we always use rokiv. Okay? 45 rokiv, 50 rokiv, 48 rokiv, 47 rokiv, 39 rokiv, etc. The next one, 20 listopada. Okay? When we specify the date, when we don't just want to say in November, in December, in January, but we want to say on the 20th of um, November, we say 20-го чого листопада родовий відмінок, okay? Ігорю давальний, indirect object, виповниться 43 роки. And here pay attention to the numerals, because when uh, the number is ending with 2, 3 and 4, we have Роки, окей? Okay? So, два роки, три роки, чотири роки. But, starting from five until nine, we have років. Двадцять п'ять років, тридцять шість років, сорок вісім років, etc., etc. Окей, that's why we say twenty, двадцять uh, років, but forty-three, сорок три роки, because it ends with three. Next one. Podaj meni bud laska sinja sumka. Podaj meni bud laska sinja sumka. So pass me uh, please a blue bag. Okay? Sinja sumka. Take your time. That should be easy. Podaj meni bud laska sinju sumku. Podaj meni bud laska ščo. Pass me, please, what? The direct object. Синю сумку. Знахідний відмінок. Ah, also, a moment of punctuation. When we have uh, a word like будласка, like polite uh, word, uh, we sort of insert it in a sentence. That's why from each side of the uh, word we would uh, have 
commas written okay so budlaska if budlaska is in the end of the sentence then from both sides we would have a comma if it's in the end of the sentence then before budlaska would be a comma and if it's in the beginning of the sentence then we will have budlaska then comma and then the rest of the sentence okay and another one a bit tr on the trickier side let us see let's see if i managed to trick you um so ihor pozitiv irina svipidzak and number two, Ihor positive preposition, Irena Hihipichak. Hm. What could that possibly mean? Positive, positive, in both cases, the verb is the same. However, before Irena, in sentence number two, we have a missed uh, preposition. Hm. What is that supposed to mean? So in first one, when we say Ihor positive Irena Svipichak, we uh, say that Ihor uh, has given, so lent Irena his um, blazer, pijak means blazer. In the second one, Ihor positive Irena yi pijak. So Ihor has borrowed from Irena her blazer. Okay, so in first one, he gave his blazer away. In second one, he took the blazer from Irena. So, Ihor, Nazivni, obviously in both sentences because that is our subject. Hm. Pozitiv Irini Svi Pidžak. Okay, so Ihor, Pozitiv Komu. Ihor has lent to whom? To Irina. Dat dativ, dative, Svi Pidžak. Uh, Znahidni Vidminok because pijak uh, is our direct object and in number two ihor positive u irene yi pijak so ihor has borrowed from irena u irene uh, genitive case yi pijak so ihor has borrowed from irena what her blazer okay hm. let me know if you got this one correct Next one. Цей будинок потребує ремонт. And цей будинок потрібен ремонт. Hmm. Hmm. What's going on here? Потребує and потрібен. Are you ready with the answers? Because I'm showing you the correct ones now. Um... Цей будинок, this house, називний відмінок, because that is here our subject. So, what does the house do? Which action it performs? Потребує. So, потребувати means to need. So, this house needs. This house needs what? Ремонт. Потребує ремонту. Потребувати чогось to need something requires uh, uh, that our um, object goes in genitive case. Цей будинок потребує ремонту. This house needs uh, a renovation. Ремонт means renovation. And second, sentence number two. In this case, we are doing some kind of inversion, right? Then now renovation, ремонт, becomes the subject. And the uh, house, say budinok, becomes uh, an object, an indirect object. Okay, let's see. Цьому будинку потрібен ремонт. Okay, ремонт є потрібний. Ремонт є потрібний. That means um, the renovation is needed to this house, okay? Цьому будинку потрібен ремонт. That's why we sort of switched places, the house and the renovation. The next one, стати вчитель його давня мрія. Стати вчитель його давня мрія. To become a teacher is his... Um, давня means something that he had a long ago something that he's been dreaming 
for a while now. Davnia Mria, the dream that's been with him for a while. Something that he's been dreaming of for a long time. Davnia Mria. Okay. Ready? Stade vchitelem yoho davnia mriya. Okay, so here yoho davnia mriya is like a definition. Okay, to become a teacher is his what? Yoho davnia mriya. His um, old his his dream that he had for long, uh, for a long time. Okay, so uh, state. Vchitelem, to become whom a teacher when we are talking about professions uh, or some sort of like roles in life state uh, matiryu to become a mother state batkom to become a father or to be someone to be a teacher to be a professor bute professorom bute matiryu bute babuseyu to be a grandfather when we are talking about things like that, of becoming someone or stepping into a role of someone or being in that role already, then we use the um, instrumental case. Stati vchitelem, stati ingenierom, stati studentom, bute batkom, bute matiryu, bute babuseyu, etc. etc. Okay, and another sentence. Kniharnia, druzi, ne znajšli, žodna kniha, japonska mowa. So what I'm meaning, so what I'm meaning to say by this sentence is that in a bookstore, friends did not find any book in Japanese language. Hmm. How can we say that, that it makes sense? After opening the brackets, after um, filling in the missing preposition, we should have Ukneharni Друзі не знайшли жодної книги японською мовою. У книгарні друзі не знайшли жодної книги японською мовою. So, where, in what, in a bookstore, when we are talking about the place, we use місцевий відмінок, locative case. Who, друзі, називний, obviously, are subject, не знайшли, did not find, did not find what? Жодної книги родовий, genitive, because here we have a negative statement. If they had found something, we would have then accus accusative, but now genitive, because negative statement, японською мовою, орудний відмінок. Again, reminding you, um, I have a video on every case, including Orudni, instrumental. So when we are talking about some language, when we want to say that something is in a certain language, then we use Rodovei Vidminok. For instance, Kniha Japonskoyu Movoyu, right? A book in Japanese language. Film Ukrainskoyu Movoyu, a movie, a film in Ukrainian language. Or even when we say to speak, some language, right? In English, we don't say speak in English or speak in Ukraine, but in Ukrainian, we say розмовляти українською мовою or uh, говорити англійською мовою, okay? Ким чим орудний відмінок, okay? When we speak about a language. Next one. Університет Стівен вивчає англійська мова та література. So, at a university, Stephen uh, studies English language and literature. How can we say that in Ukrainian? So after opening the brackets, we would have, attention, correct answer. В університеті Стівен вивчає англійську мову та літературу. So again, where? At a university, uh, we say in English, right? In Ukrainian, we say в університеті. Sometimes I would read questions like when do I use u and when do I use v when I mean to say in in Ukrainian. Well, here is a very good example uh, where, like, again, u and v is the same preposition, just like different forms of it. And here is a very good example of 
well, you technically could say universality, but that just does not sound right, okay? In Ukraine, we don't like um, many vowels or many consonants in a row. We try to avoid that. So, v universality makes perfect sense. U universality just does not sound right because two um, vowels in a row, two same vowels in a row, similar vowels in a row, hmm, does not sound right, okay? Um, yeah, so v universality, where, when we're talking about the place, locative case, Stephen Nazivny Vidminov, because a subject, Vivchaya Sho studies what? Anglisku mowu, and studies what? Uh, and literature, as Nahidne Vidminov, obviously, accusative case, as an indirect, as a direct object of um, the verb Vivchaty. Mm. Next one. Not a single noun has been spotted in this uh, sentence. Only pronouns. Let us see if it's going to be easier to work with pronouns rather than nouns. So, вона не хоче ніхто бачити. Вона не хоче ніхто бачити. Take a moment. Вона не хоче нікого бачити. So, Vona obviously stays vona because that's um, our subject, nominative case. Ne hoche doesn't want, but. Koho nikoho. Here, rodovi vidminok bachete to see. She doesn't want to see anyone. So, uh, our case here is again rodovi because ne hoche is uh, a negative statement. If we said she wants to see someone, we would say вона хоче когось побачити, for instance, and then we would say кого що. Then we would have accusative case as an indirect object, but with negative statements. <laughs> pay attention, we have a genitive case. Confusing, I know. Next one. Субота я була весілля. Галина і Петро. Hmm. So, on Saturday I was at Halina and Petro's wedding. Okay, Vesilia means wedding. Uh, so, again, we have one, two, three prepositions that we need to insert, but then with Halina and Petro we can also do without a preposition. Okay, we can have a preposition we could omit the preposition. Are you ready? The answer is в суботу, or we could say у суботу, but then в суботу sounds just fine. Місцевий відмінок, when we talk about the days of the week, when we want to say on Sunday, on Saturday, on Wednesday, etc., etc., we use locative case with the preposition в or u. Okay, в суботу, в неділю, в понеділок, у вівторок, в середу, etc., etc. Я, I, називний, була на весіллі, okay, на весіллі, на чому, на кому, на чому. Again, locative case, місцевий відмінок. And at a wedding, we say на весіллі, on a wedding. Pay attention, memorize that. U Halina i Petra. So at Halina and Petros. U, u, or we could say v subotu ja bola na vesilji Halina i Petra. Again, without uh, a preposition, you can um, be just fine. Next one, a sort of request. Ti ne mih be posidite, dite, poke ja budu magazin. Could you? Um, babysit while I am at a store or why I am in a shop. Okay, magazine means store or a shop. Could be a mall or something. So, could you babysit? So, in Ukraine we say to sit with children. Okay, that means to babysit. So, posidite uh, and dite in a correct case would mean to babysit. Поки я буду магазин. So the preposition that we use here is з, with, okay? To sit with children, to babysit. 
And the correct answer is Ти не міг би посидіти з дітьми, поки я буду в магазині. Ти, називний, obviously, не міг би посидіти with whom? З дітьми. When we uh, mean to say with someone, з дітьми, з тобою, зі мною, з Оксаною, зі Світланою, з Гаврилом, um, whatever, з учителем, з професором. With someone, we use instrumental. If you were watching the video, then you should know. If you have seen my video, then you should know. Поки я, nominative, буду в магазині. Will be in a store. Will be where in a store. Locative case. В магазині. Next. Ірина запросив побачення наш новий сусід. Number two. Ірина запросила побачення наш новий сусід. So two almost identical sentences, but pay attention to the verbs. Ірина запросив and запросила. So запросив is a masculine form of the verb. So in one case, Ірина was invited on a date, so she was an object, okay? And in another case, she invited the new neighbor on a date. So to say on a date, in Ukrainian we use preposition na, so we would say na pobaczenia, okay? Na pobaczenia. Let's check your answers. Irinu zaprosiv na pobaczenia nasz nowy sosid. Ірина запросила на побачення нашого нового сусіда. Окей? Okay? Hmm. So, in the, first, uh, in the first sentence, наш новий сусід is the subject, right? Um, that's why he is nominative. And Ірина is a direct object, that's why she is accusative. Ірину запросив на побачення наш новий сусід. But, number two... Ірина did the, invi uh, the inviting. So, Ірина запросила на побачення кого? Whom? Нашого нового сусіда. Знахідний відмінок. Direct object. Next one. Моя донька завтра день народження. Ми запросили її нові однокласники. So, my daughter has a birthday tomorrow. We uh, invited her new uh, classmates. Okay? Однокласники means classmates. So, my daughter has a birthday tomorrow. In this uh, sentence, we do not use the verb to have, mati. We go a different way. Ми запросили її нові однокласники. Ready to give me the answers? Let's see. У моєї доньки завтра день народження. Окей? Okay? День народження у кого? У моєї доньки. Uh, then we, in this case we use родовий відмінок. Ми, називний obviously because subject, запросили кого? Whom? Її нових однокласників. Знахідний відмінок because direct object. Next sentence. Дякую ти важке, але правильне рішення. Thank you for difficult but correct decision. Okay, so for in this case we would use preposition za. Okay? Let's see the answer. Дякую тобі за важке, але правильне рішення. Дякую кому? To whom? I think you. Whom? I think you. Датів за важке, але правильне рішення. For a difficult but correct 
a decision. For what? Accusative. Next. Коли ви виїжджаєте завтра? О, шоста ранок. А звідки? Головний вокзал. Okay. The preposition. One preposition is missing. In the last sentence. Okay, so... Коли ви виїжджаєте завтра? When are you moving? When are you leaving tomorrow? At six in the morning. But from where? From the main station. Let's see the answers. Коли ви виїжджаєте завтра? When obviously ви stays the same. Nominative case because subject clear. Now, with the time... That could be a bit complicated. O shosti dativ. O shosti chogo ranku in the morning. Rodovi vidminok. O shosti ranku. O shosti chogo vechera. At six in the evening. And from where? As vidke? From the main station. Z chogo. Z golovnogo vokzalu. Rodovi vidminok. Next. Для чого ти нові джинси? Мої старі джинси, тепер я затісні. So, what do you need new jeans for? Like, why do you need new, new jeans? Well, my old jeans are now for me too tight. Тісний means tight. Затісні means too tight. Okay? Hmm. The answer is Для чого тобі нові джинси? Для чого тобі нові джинси? Okay, so для чого тобі something that we say um, we use that uh, dative case when we mean to ask what do you need this for? Okay, мої старі джинси obviously nominative тепер для мене затісні are now for me too tight. Для мене, для кого, для чого, родовий відмінок. Okay? Next one. Що ця книга? Цікаві і розумні люди. Це історія про те, як вони мандрують світ. Okay? So, what I mean to say here is what is this book about? About uh, interesting and smart people. It is a story about them traveling the world. Okay, sweet means world. Uh, Mandruvate means to travel. Reminding you that about in Ukrainian means pro. Okay, let's see. Pro що ця книга? Про що ця книга? What is this book about? Про кого? Про що? Accusative. Про цікавих і розумних людей. So again, when we have a preposition uh, про, what about, about something, then we, have, uh, then we are dealing with accusative. Uh, про тебе. Про мене, про нього, про них, про людей, про цікавих і розумних людей, про що, etc., etc., окей? Це історія про те, як вони, they, um, nominative, because subject, мандрують світом. Мандрують чим мандрують світом? So, the verb мандрувати, to travel, requires that the subject goes in an uh, instrumental case. Uh, мандрувати світом, to travel the world. Мандрувати Україною, to travel Ukraine, um, around Ukraine. Uh, мандрувати Італією, to travel around Italy. Mm, мандрувати містом, to travel around the, the town, etc., etc., okay? Я – супермаркет. Ти щось купити? Так. Купи я пачка кава і кілограм яблука, будь ласка. So, I'm going to the supermarket. Do I buy something for you? Yes, buy me a package of coffee um, and a kilogram of apples, please.
please. A kilo of apples, please. So we have Yav yeah, supermarket. So um, sometimes uh, we can omit the word idu, right? I am going to the supermarket or I'm on my way. We just say I to supermarket. That means Yav yeah, supermarket or Ya na robotu, I'm going to work or Ya uh, ja, ja do podruhy, I'm to see my friend, okay? So because the, the, the verb is kind of obvious here, so we, we just don't say it. So we have supermarket. Uh, to be щось купити, okay? To you, to whom, давальный, щось, something. Купити, купити що, a direct uh, object. Щось, something, accusative, but uh, to buy, купити кому, to buy to whom, indirect object, uh, dative case. To be, to be щось купити, do I buy something for you? Tak, kupy many to me, buy to me, dative. But what? Pachku. Pachka becomes pachku in uh, accusative. But pachku of what? Pachku kawy, rodowy. Sklanku moloka. Um, Pliaszku wody. Okay? Accusative and then of what genitive rodovy and again a kilo kilogram chogo yabluk and a kilo of what of apples genitive case budlaska please comma before budlaska like i said because budlaska here is in the end of the sentence next ty вже заповнив формуляр Так, де я можу зробити копії? Я зроблю. Скільки копії ти треба? Три штука, будь ласка. Hmm. So, have you filled in the formula? Is that the word in English? A formula? Hmm. Yes. Where can I make copies? I will make them. I'll do it. How many copies do you need? Three Three, please. Okay. Let's see. Ти вже заповнив формуляр. Okay. So you obviously is our subject. Заповнив що? Заповнив формуляр. Знахідний відмінок. Так. Де я можу зробити копії? Where can I? Again, я obviously subject. Можу зробити що? Зробити копії. Again, direct object. Знахідний відмінок. Я зроблю скільки копій. So, how many of something? Скільки копій, скільки друзів в тебе, скільки грошей, скільки uh, днів, скільки ночей, etc., etc. Родовий відмінок. Тобі давальний треба. Скільки копій тобі треба? How many copies do you need? Три штуки, будь ласка. Three pieces, please. So, штука means piece or item. So, three, three uh, pieces, please. Th or just three, please, in English. Um, or, so, but when we have three, then we say три чого, три штуки. But when we have um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or the number that ends in zero, we would use штук in genitive. Шість штук, п'ять штук, десять штук, okay? So, три. Одна штука. So, одну штуку, дві штуки, три штуки, чотири штуки, but п'ять штук, шість штук, сім штук, вісім штук, дев'ять штук, десять, одинадцять, etc., etc. Okay? Moving on to the next one. Яке число ти повинна надіслати документи? 30 квітень. Again, remembering the dates and how to deal with them. So, the, the sentence is by which date 
must you send the documents? Povinna means like must, have to. So by which date do you have to send or must you send the documents? By the 30th of uh, April, by April 30th. Are you ready? So by, uh, for by, by which date, until which date, uh, we say do. So do jakoho chesla, rodovej vidminok, do jakoho chesla, by which date. Ty, nazivni je obvijesli, povinna nadislati dokumenti. Do jakoho chesla ti povinna nadislati dokumenti. Do jakoho chesla ti povinna nadislati što, to send what. Okay, again, we have the direct object, uh, dokumenti, plural, znahidni vidminok. Okay? Or, let's say, uh, do jakoho česla ti povinna nadislati tju kopiju? Again, znahidni vidminok. O, do jakoho česla ti povinna nadislati cej um, email? Okay? Znahidni vidminok. Do... Do jakoho, again, do trecatoho, again, genitive, do jakoho, genitive, do trecatoho, genitive, kvitnja, again, genitive, do dvacatoho serpnja, do dvacet drugoho lipnja, do peršoho kvitnja, do tretjoho berezna, etc., etc. Rodovi vidminok in both cases. Next one. Vi majete vse neophidne nova kvartira. Majže. Zavtra jidemo kupovati holodilnik i knižkova polica. Vi majete vse neophidne nova kvartira. Do you have everything necessary? Do you have everything necessary? Uh, or do you have all the necessities um, in the new apartment? Nova kvartira. Preposition missing. Majže. Zavtra jidemo kupovati holodilnik i Knižkova polica. Take your time. Take your time. Ready? Vy majete vse neophidne v novi kvartiri. Majže. Zavtra jidemo kupovati holodilnik i knižkovu policu. So, vy here obviously you plural uh, subject. Majete što? Majete vse neophidne. Here, um, znahidni vidminok, obviously, because it is our direct object. Do you have what? Everything uh, necessary. Also, all the necessities, right? Vse neophidne. U novi kvartiri. In the new apartment. So, do you have everything, uh, all the necessities? Where? In a new apartment, that's why locative case. Majže, almost. Zavtra jidemo kupovati holodilnik i knižkovu policu. Tomorrow we are going to buy, to buy what direct object? F a fridge, znahidni vidminok. I knižkovu policu. And a bookshelf, znahidni vidminok. And here, pay attention, again, unfair, the masculine um, noun stays the same, holodilnik in, in znahidni vidminok in accusative case and in nominative holodilnik and in accusative holodilnik. But the feminine, knižkova policia in nominative becomes knižkovu policiu in accusative. Yeah, well, that, that you also need to pay attention to. And finally, we have reached the end of the video. My favorite moment where I'm thanking everybody who is supporting my channel on Patreon, even though I'm being the worst at posting these days. So thank you very much for everybody who, who, who used to support me, who is supporting me still. It truly, truly means a lot. So yeah, and for the new patrons who have just uh, joined my Patreon, you can uh, download the, the, this presentation and all the text versions of in, in form of presentation or uh, in text documents. Um, 
of my videos if you need them if you want them and do with them or whatever it is that you like to do and if you don't use them then yeah thank you very much for just being my supporter it truly truly means a lot if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't your every interaction with me counts and truly truly means a lot it means a lot for a youtube algorithm it means a lot for me so thank you very much again i'm wishing you all the best best of luck with learning ukrainian i hope you had fun today please leave me your feedback write me anything thank you very much again bye